So the topic today, uh, aging in place, what are the issues? Very interesting and I think appropriate topic for our city and uh, as I look out over the crowd, probably a, an appropriate topic for several of us in the audience today. Uh, it's probably important for everyone if you look at it from a family perspective. And uh, Lethbridge is, of course, a city that has a fairly significant uh, percentage of seniors living here. So I think it's a very uh, timely topic. Now, a lot of you probably know our speaker, uh, Austin Martin. Uh, Dr. Austin Martin is a, a Lethbridge native. Uh, while he was born in Edmonton, he was raised here uh, and uh, went to university here and uh, doing undergraduate work in geography. Uh, he was accepted as a field scientist uh, with NASA to uh, uh, work in the Antarctic on a meteorite recovery project. And at that time, uh, he uh, was uh, the first, uh, his episode with, uh, with uh, mental illness. And since then, uh, he has uh, had um, a very interesting life dealing with a, a severe and persistent uh, mental illness. He has gone on to be a great advocate for those with mental illness, and at the same time, he's a greatly accomplished person. Uh, after being diagnosed, he was told that his life was over, uh, as he knew it, but that was not as he thought about it. He uh, earned a PhD uh, and then established Proper Place Club Clubhouse uh, for people with mental illness in Edmonton, uh, a place where adults uh, with mental illness can uh, live their lives uh, with their illness and gain support. He's been on numerous committees and boards, and he currently serves on the Premier's Council on the status of persons with disabilities and the Alberta College of Social Workers. Um, I've had the privilege of working with uh, Austin on several boards and uh, he and I were fortunate to be appointed to the uh, Governor General's uh, Circle on Addictions and Mental Health uh, back a few years ago and I know he's still actively involved with that. Uh, he has, has the Order of Canada. Um, he has also received the highest awards of, uh, from the uh, Social Sciences Council and the Canadian Mental Health Association. This year, he received an honorary doctorate from the University of Alberta and the Medal of Honor, highest award for a non-physician from the Canadian Medical Association. Uh, Austin and his father, Ernest, uh, Dr. Ernest uh, Martin here in the city, have also collaborated on writing several books on Alberta's history. So you can see he's a very accomplished person and a very uh, busy person and uh, he's very busy. We have to whisk him out of here very quickly afterwards because at two o'clock he'll be receiving an honorary doctorate from the University of Lethbridge. <laughs> and just to add, he and his wife Catherine uh, still reside in Edmonton with their basset hound Gandhi. Austin, please come forward. Well, I'll quickly, uh, I uh, no longer serve on the Premier's Council, but I did serve for just under nine years. And we dealt with a variety of physical and mental uh, disabilities. So um, how do I uh, advance, return? Um, you know, so, uh, and also my wife uh, was in a wheelchair for eight years before we got married and taught herself how to walk. She was without health care coverage in the States. So she, uh, <clears throat> I've learned a lot from her informally about how to, uh, you know, handicap proof or uh, uh, aging in place, similar concepts. One of the things in Alberta is really, because we don't have a program in Canada or Alberta, similar to the Americans with Disabilities Act, there's no incentive for the private sector or even the public sector to really think forward and think in terms of constructing the human ecology, the space that people live in and function in public and private spaces from a mobility standpoint and, and various other disability issues. So the contractors um, generally, for example, I'll give you an example of something. If contractors were to spend maybe 10 or $20 and put in a plywood sheet behind um, the wall of every newly constructed uh, shower in the wall, 
it would enable people to very easily, for a few dollars, convert that to get grab bars, unlike what it is today, which is usually they don't put that plywood in because they want to save money. So it means you have to go into the studs, which makes it a lot more difficult. Sometimes you have to disassemble the whole bathroom, which costs thousands of dollars. We are talking something that is practical, uh, is, does not cost that much money, as you'll see many of the things later on. The building codes are not sympathetic towards aging in place, to be honest. That's my opinion, and since I no longer serve on a government committee, I can say that. And there's a real crisis, and even the government appreciates the boomers, some of you, the leading edge of that, um, uh, that our physical space is not really prepared to deal with mobility issues. Even the way they have grants to retrofit homes, but wouldn't it be better to start trying to construct places with um, aging in place concepts? This is uh, Allison and Peter Fades. Their uh, home won an award. They uh, were proactive. They hired a designer to make their uh, home in Edmonton down in the River Valley accessible. It uh, has a ramp to go up to the front entrance. No step for the front entry, so that means that if one of them is in a wheelchair, also the doors are wider. It would cost nothing to make doors wider. You know, you, to go into a home that already exists and put in larger doors to accommodate wheelchairs is a small fortune. And, and this, this is something where, to be honest, a lot of this is already the, the, the horse is out the gate. The, the water's already flown, but so this is, um, oh, they, oh, these are, you can see there on the side, um, uh, an accessible path to the home, and um, then um, lowered windows or taller windows. It's very important to have natural light, especially when you're homebound, because you need to have that stimulation rather than, so they factored that in. So they could, this is their forever home. Also doorknobs, this is the kind of doorknob, especially for arthritic, uh, people that develop arthritis, you can push down. And um, also thermostatic auto control and pressure balanced faucets. And um, also it isn't in the building code to have multi-story homes to have a closet so that you can convert into a, a into an, a small elevator which the fades actually they whenever they have dinner parties everybody wants to ride in their elevator and then adequate uh, handrails uh, in terms of people that want to modify to try to uh, put handrails uh, hopefully on both sides and also to uh, have wider stairs an increased visibility because of uh, eyesight problems. Also, another thing is uh, standard toilets. Uh, um, we had uh, when we had a flood several years ago, and um, the the workmen had a choice between two toilets. They always preferred our toilet because it's uh, elevated toilet. So actually, this is actually a preferred type of toilet. It feels better than the lower toilet, and yet it's not common. So you have to you have to retrofit. And then also to have maneuverability for a wheelchair. And also uh, having large enough uh, showers. Um, uh, this is an example of a, 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 a lip to the bottom. Like when you go into the shower, rather than a, a metal thing, they have a rubberized gasket. If any of you have seen uh, home improvement shows, they show that. And also, instead of a bench, they put in a wooden, uh, wooden uh, uh, stool. This is another thing. Um, tall, instead of the traditional type of toggle light switches, having um, touch ones so that if you're arthritic or have problems, you can press with your arm or your hand. And it's a lot easier. And then also uh, recessed lower to the floor. And then also, uh, when you have uh, stoves, either on the side, or Catherine actually said she preferred 
um, stoves with uh, the uh, controls in the front so that you don't scald yourself reaching over. Many people uh, that live in traditional homes in wheelchairs have burn marks all over their arms from reaching over. And uh, of course electric. And then easy to read, that's another thing because of sight issues. And also they have access to the internet. Also the fades um, had an in-law suite which could be easily converted to uh, for a caregiver suite when they uh, get older. And then, um, then reduced uh, efficiencies in, uh, in the heating system. And then this is where we live which is in a lower part of echelon of Edmonton and yet our thing is we're on the bottom floor in this suite and the suite behind it as you can see there's not, no grade. So actually um, you can see the entrance, no step again uh, but the uh, door is quite thin although my wife was able to navigate it when she injured herself and had to be in a wheelchair for six months. We were able to uh, smoothly transition to DATS, which is disabled adult transit, and he would pick up in front of the home, and she was able to wheel from the bedroom all the way out to the, uh, the handicap van. And then we have these kind of locks, which um, for those of you that, uh, I'm not, I don't have a disability, but I always lose keys. So this is a way, I mean, it's a problem if you don't remember the code. But, uh, <laughs> which I've done several times. Uh, but uh, um, this is a uh, alternative if, if, you, if you like it, to have um, a code and you can see the type of uh, knob that's uh, uh, friendly towards aging in place. And the uh, flooring is a smooth kind of industrial carpet that is friendly for, uh, for, um, um, for wheelchairs. <laughs> And also, uh, the color texture is good for contrast. It, and, you, you know, shag carpet is very bad and difficult to move over in wheelchairs. And also, you can see the transition from the carpet, from the carpet to uh, the Tarquette microfiber floor we have. And uh, it's similar to linoleum, except with, with texture to it, so it's non-slip vinyl. And then this is one of our uh, things we're hoping to put in uh, wainscoting sometime this year because of uh, moving things. That's a tricycle, by the way. And also the lights. You can see the lights. Another thing that rather than having a handyman come in every day, to, every time you have to change a light bulb, with these light bulbs you're able to reach up and change them by hand easily. You don't think of something as simple as this as, save, as aging in place, but that simple. Also for security, uh, since we're on the main floor, we have shutters that go all the way down, which we put down at night, because again, we don't live in a good part of Edmonton, but it might be considered. This is staring out to the uh, thing. Although one thing I don't like about the apartment, and many apartments, is usually the transition to balconies has a lip, so you have to develop a ramp to go over and back down. So basically, uh, that's a problem all, all over the place. And you can see the shutters coming down and all the way down. So it's pretty, uh, pretty secure. Fort Apache the Martin, so. <laughs> and then uh, also wall support um, for, and jet tubs for aging in place so you don't, so you can relieve muscle ache. And then also we put in the second unit, um, <coughs> washing machines and my wife sits on this um, since, and reaches in with her walker, with her uh, cane and a rolling chair to assist her since she has spinal arthritis. There's me sitting on my chair, wide arms. You trying to use more advanced technology like iPhones, uh, similar to what the Fades did with their thermostats, although that can be a little difficult. I know with my own parents, uh, they don't uh, like to adapt to computers. And um, you can, uh, 
also having a um, location that's a walkable access because uh, in a lot of cases people lose their license um, for whatever reason and have to function without a car. So you have to be near public transit and uh, hopefully some things that are within walking distance or rolling distance. And we're just next to a Safeway and a Shoppers Drug Mart. And so uh, basically some of these concepts are very simple to uh, implement and, but it just takes forethought and people like Ron Wickman in Edmonton have been recognized for their uh, accessible designs and he goes into very advanced designs but many things could retrofit and also be put into new housing developments that aren't. I don't think it's necessarily sometimes intentional. I think it's because people just haven't looked through that lens, you know, for the for a while. Um, have I taken up all my time? Or no, I haven't. Oh, I've only taken up ten minutes. Five minutes. Do you want any, any questions? We're going to have questions after. Anyways. Um, Okay, thank you, Austin. I think you've given us lots to think about and lots of ideas. I know as we were sitting there, we thought, ah, oh, that's a pretty good idea.